guys, this is part two for my video of things that you can use to do overhead like recording so whenever I'm like doing a drawing tutorial what I can do. So I showed you before my iPad stand um, that I place my iPad on. Um, this is my second option right here that I will use sometimes. So I'm going to unwind the cable. I should have done this in the beginning. But anyways, this is IPVO's um, Ziggy Cam. Okay, so I bought this online um, because I originally had one of these when I was working in public school. So these were great um, for just a document camera. So it has a USB attachment right here. Costs about mm, 100 bucks. Yeah, I think I paid $100 for it or maybe like $99 online for it. This is the 4K one. All right guys, so I'm screen recording this right now and you can see right now I have the actual um, Ziggy camera. It's propped up higher, so I would say I have it about five or six inches away from the actual uh, tabletop because I feel like whenever you're demoing, um, it's too low just by the stand. Uh, it is pretty nice. It has this adjustment here at the top with all the little, um, you know, up and down little um, screws so that it, you, you know you can place it and then it holds still. Um, you have a little button at the top for exposure and then one for focusing and it's this blue button so then I can automatically focus while I'm working. I have one of my illustrations below this. Okay so here is the software here and I am running on um, a Mac okay. So Visualizer is what it's called and you would download it off of their website and I'll put a link um, there it is. The icon looks like kind of like the uh, camera lens right here and then I would click on it and launch it which I already have it open. Okay so some of the things that I have to adjust here it says you can select your camera if you don't want it on your actual camera and I wanted to use this to do um, have it actually record off of my webcam that's built into my um, laptop I could do that so, um, but I always just use uh, the Ziggy camera, which is the 4K USB camera number one. So I would want to make sure that's set to that. So automatically focus it, focuses it. You can adjust some of these settings. See how I can click on it, see? So that's kind of nice you can do that and it's kind of built into there. So when you're demonstrating, you can really get a nice crisp um, saturated image right there. Let's talk about this one that I uh, use a little bit more. So if I need to zoom in or zoom back out, so if I'm doing something that's really detailed, that's really great for that. Let's talk about rotation. So depending on how my camera's set up, sometimes in the past I've had to click on a different rotation because I needed to orient it um, the way my space was on my desk. Um, but right now it's set pretty well that I'm happy with it. So options to mirror it as well. Alright, so let's talk about resolution. I'm fine with 1920 by 1080, but if you would like a higher resolution, you can. You can also change it to different aspect ratios. So when we talk about an aspect ratio, we're talking about how big this screen is right here. So if I wanted a square, I'm going to go back to auto. So it looks like it's normally set by a 16 by 9 ratio, which is your usual standard size uh, computer monitor or television screen. Um, some of you may have um, an old-fashioned smart board and it's more square, so maybe having this proportion for square might be a better option for you. Okay, exposure, once again, if I need to adjust, and I can also lock that down. White balance as well. I'm pretty much happy with that as is actually it's a little bit more on the greener side. So it needs to go a little bit cooler. Okay, so that's closer to what the original color would be. Focusing. How sharp do I, I want it to be? That's good right there. Oh, and then it has these filters here. I'm not really a big fan of these, but yeah, I could 
change it to one of these kind of interesting filters, but I usually use it on that one right there. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is, oh, see, nice, see, you can also move and adjust the screen. I'm going to click on it right here. I'm going to hit escape, though. So let's go back out. Okay, so when I hit escape, I can see the entire screen right here. So let's click on modes here. So this is kind of a little bit more of a watered down. Buttons are really big. I don't ever use this. The buttons are just way too big, so I'm going to bring it back. And I can click on mode again, and then it'll switch back out. Let's make that go full screen. Information right here. What is the camera that's being used? Um, preference settings. Probably the biggest one that I like to keep is if you're happy once you've made these adjustments and you tend to like do the same thing every time you're using this, keep camera settings is really nice. Um, they have other options for your taking your photos, your recording, uh, slow motion, live broadcast. You can connect it to a YouTube channel, which is really cool. Um, you can do time lapse. So these are different option settings right here in uh, the little gearbox right here. Oh, this is for another screen. So every time I click that, if I want to get double screens, I just click on that. I'm just going to close out of that. See? And every time you hit it, you get another window. I, I really honestly never use that. I don't ever really see an option for this. Um, probably the big one is, let's go down here. Let me uncheck that one here for a second. Okay. This button right here, if I click on this, these are all your options of different types of actual things that you can record or take a picture. The one that I've used quite a bit is, I would use this a lot with students' artwork. So if you want to quickly be able to take, I'd stick a student's piece of artwork underneath there, boom, take a picture of it, and then I could upload it to a school website or to promote on uh, the social media. So that was awesome for that. I really like that quick and easy. Um, it's 4K, so your my photos were pretty good. Um, and then they were already on my computer, so I didn't have to uh, transfer them or, you know, AirDrop or, you know, uh, Dro Google Drive or Dropbox or anything like that. It was already, you know, back and forth on my phone. Um, video, um, this is definitely the one that I use quite a bit. So when I'm doing any kind of drawing demonstrations, art demonstrations, I'm using this option. When I click on it, see the icon changes right here. When, excuse me, when you click it again, it's actually going to start um, recording everything you do and it, it'll give you a video file. Um, this one is for your slow motion. I've, I've honestly never used that one. There are these other ones like the live for broadcasting. You have time lapse. Uh, you can even do a QRC code. So if I actually had one, I could place it here in this window and it could scan it for me. It says it can do text to speech. Once again, I haven't tried it. I've never had to use that feature before. Um, scanning documents. Magnifying. acting kind of crazy here. Ah, there we go. Now it's working. It was a little slow. But I could magnify and zoom into a certain section of the artwork. And it's a little slow and a little laggy on my computer. Okay, stop motion, which would be pretty cool if you want to do some kind of stop motion animation. But at $100 a pop, I don't think it's the best option for doing stop motion. Um, then you have split screen. So if I want to actually be demonstrating and then actually doing and talking, I think this one I will actually probably start using when I do more demonstrations and then I can talk and actually record myself. I'm going to go back to snapshot. Okay. And let it refocus. Okay. So besides some of the uh, main options I use over here, I don't really use these as much. Um, Okay, so I could freeze the image if I want to. Okay, it just freezes it. I'm going to unfreeze it because I, I don't want to freeze that. Oh, pick, launch picture in picture. So here I am, 
And I may actually use this one for when I do my drawing demonstration. This would actually be really great. Yeah, I like this picture in picture. It kind of reminds me of the way if you're in Zoom and you're you're doing something in there and you're like sharing your screen. So pretty good right here. Uh, this is great if you are selected reading. So if you are using your cursor and you had actual text. So say I had a book. Let me see if I can find a book right here like this, like phrases itself. So you want your students to be able to focus on that line and maybe they're doing guided reading with you. So as a teacher, this for like a homeroom teacher, this would be awesome. And see, you just use, I'm using my cursor on my mouse to move it up and down. Pretty cool. Um, you can also divide your screen. Let me click on that to remove it. Oh, look at that. You can even really get them to focus on a line by clicking on the line by line option right here. I'm going to uncheck that because I want to go. Okay. So now if you want to grid things, so say, let me go back to my drawing and maybe you wanted to divide something into different grids. Or maybe you had to discuss something mathematical or something like that. Or if you're doing a grid drawing, this would be great too. Look at that. Grids everything off. And then I'll go back to normal. And if you hover, you're going to see what it, it calls it. So that's my little cheat. Um, if I need to focus it. So if I don't want to focus it on the actual Z camera and I want to focus it on my laptop, I just click that button. So other notation options while I'm on the snapshot. That's pretty cool. And I can also erase it. So yeah, very versatile. I, I personally um, really like the upgrades they've made on this visualizer software. Um, because in the past, I used the older version and it was nowhere nearly this robust. So um, I definitely suggest check it out. Um, like I said, I bought mine for $99, got free shipping with it. Um, and it was great. It's been great. It works like a champ. Uh, very compact, portable, highly recommend um, re recommend it for a purchase for a teacher, whether you, especially for art teachers because we're doing a lot of demonstration. You probably have a larger group of people, and this is a great way to demonstrate how you're working on your process and project it onto a large screen because that's how I mainly used it. And the fact that you re can record what you're demonstrating and then you can go ahead and post that later on whether it's a YouTube channel or a website for your students to be able to see, hey, I missed out on this demo, and you don't want to have to redo the demo, it's excellent. I've used it that way before myself, and I can't tell you what a lifesaver it's been. Students who are out absent, I just upload it to Google Classroom or put it, I put it on my YouTube channel, um, then put the link in my Google Classroom, and it was fantastic. So, oh yeah, I could have done picture in picture so you could hear me talk about it. But yeah, I, very versatile. I would highly recommend um, the IPVO um, Ziggy camera. Get the 4K one. That was uh, the one I saw just like a month ago on their website. It was still available. Um, they may have been out of stock because with everybody switching over to distance learning, um, these were going like hotcakes. So um, totally recommend it. Just be careful. Um... I have accidentally in the past, the first one I got, I accidentally broke, um, it's the little uh, screws that kind of look like, uh, I wonder if I can show this, well actually I don't know if I can show it on here because otherwise i got to move my setup, but it's basically the points where it can move up and down, they are a little bit fragile, so if you knock it over accidentally, um, you could damage it and then it will never hold it up in place. So I had to tape mine and it was like, oh, it was such a, and so anyways, I got myself another one for my personal use for when I'm at home. So it's been great and, um, used it quite a bit in my classroom, totally worthwhile to purchase. Anyways, I hope this helps you decide if you want to purchase this product. Um, I've tested in the classroom and 